If you feel like you are constantly telling your kids to eat their vegetables or trying to convince them to have breakfast before school, you are not alone. Moms and dads go through this every single day and it can be very frustrating, I know firsthand. So how do you stop these food fights? Well, registered dietitian and author of The Ultimate Diet Log, Cynthia Sass, says it's not as hard as you might think, and she's here with some tips for us. It's great to have you back. Thank you so much. It's great to be back. Let's start with veggies, because yes. getting your kids to eat their vegetables is one of the toughest things. I know some kids who won't eat anything green, or they won't have them <laughs> on the same plate. So what yep. can you do? They pick them out. Right? Yep. What do you, you know, do? I don't recommend trying to bribe or coerce or force your kids to eat them, because you know, really what happens, we know from the research, and I know from anecdotal experience, working with adults who had that happen to them as kids, Kids, they actually learn to hate vegetables even more when if it becomes you force them. exactly. So it's all about a little bit of trickery, which I think is fair game. So, for example, if your kids love smoothies, adding some carrots or some beets to a fruit smoothie will blend right in because they're not overpowering flavors and they're a little bit sweet, so they won't even know that they're there. Maybe putting some mashed cauliflower in with mashed potatoes is a way to sneak it in. Or having them eat foods that they like that have a little bit of veggies in. For example, this is a carrot muffin. You can do zucchini muffins or cookies. But one of my favorite tips that's not trickery at all is actually getting kids to get excited about vegetables by growing them with them. And what so, they grow, then they want to try. Absolutely. They, they eat it. You know, the wonderment of looking at something go from a seed to an actual vegetable is amazing. And you don't have to have a garden. You can do this on your windowsill. This is a little kit that has greens in it. And then, of course, we have tomatoes. And it's actually like little matchsticks, which you yeah. can grow. What a great right. idea. Yeah. It's very so clever. It really, when you bring kids to the farm, farmer's market and you get them excited about picking out the vegetables that they want to try and maybe researching them on the internet, you know, things like that where they start to really have more of an attachment. It's not eating it because they have to or because they should, but because they're genuinely excited about it. So. Okay. Breakfast can be difficult oh, too. Oh, yes. A lot of kids come to the table, they don't want to eat anything mm -hmm. before school or they're rushing out the door, but you have some ideas for things they can just take along so most, you don't have to sit. Most kids say, I'm not hungry. Mm -hmm. I don't want to eat anything. Heard but that. what I would say is, have your kids try an experiment with you just for one week. Have them eat something really small. It could even be half of a banana or a mini banana. It could be a quarter cup of something like almonds that you can put in a little Ziploc baggie and have them take them with it. With it. And it can even be a bar that you can eat in just a few bites, but it has a lot of nutrition for those few bites. And then, after about one week's time, I can almost guarantee you that they are going to be hungry in the morning, and then you can start adding to that. So if you started with the almonds, then add the banana. Then maybe add some dry cereal that you can eat with your hands, like a check or an O shape. Then add some yogurt. And Before these are you all know things it, that will hold you. Absolutely, and then okay. they're portable, and okay. they won't go bad. So. What about kids who are maybe a little bit older who are experimenting with becoming um, a vegetarian or a mm -hmm. vegan? How do you make sure that they're getting um, the, the proper nutrients? This is really popular in preteens and teens, and veganism is becoming much more prevalent in that age group. So what I would recommend is if they are willing to commit to eating the foods that they would need to eat to get the same nutrients that they would get from meat and dairy, I would support it because we know that statistically vegetarians have um, healthier lives they have lower risks of every chronic disease and lower rates of obesity, but they have to do it right. So they can't be eating chips and peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. No, they, they have need to support, have things. Right? Yeah, edamame okay. and quinoa are both complete proteins, meaning they have all the amino acids that your body needs to use that protein for repair and healing. The same equal quality as meat and dairy. Blackstrap molasses is something that can be added to natural almond butter or smoothies. It's very high in minerals, including calcium and iron. So if they're willing to eat in the way that gets them the nutrients they need, I think it's okay. Maybe Maybe bring them to a dietitian that specializes in vegetarianism and maybe sit down with a book so you can plan out meals with them. But um, it's something to not panic about because kids need nutrients, but those nutrients don't have to come from meat and dairy. There are other ways to get them in. Okay, um, soda is a problem. Oh, yeah. Kids want to have soda with meals. They want to yes. drink it all the time. And if you uh, don't give it to them at all, they're going to want to go and drink it somewhere else, right? I've had kids who have saved up their allowance and go buy big gulps with it because oh, they're not allowed to have soda at home. So you don't want to create that kind of, you know, you can't have it so you want it more type mm -hmm. of thing. But there are some healthier alternatives now. Some of these sodas are being made with 100% fruit juice, and that is the only sweetener. There's no high fructose corn syrup, there's no added sugar. It's just fruit juice with a little bit of, you know, the, the, the fizzle in it. Not so bad. A, right. 
Or you can have, if it, for younger kids, they love this, is making your own soda, which you can just combine a little bit of 100% fruit juice and something like an all-natural seltzer, and they can do a half and half mixture, and then you've created your own soda. But it's okay to put limits on it. You know, one of these is a lot healthier because it is 100% fruit juice, and it can count toward their fruit servings, but it's perfectly okay to say only one per day. Okay, and finally, we're almost out of time, yeah. but give us your great idea for getting the family to sit together for a meal, because that's so important. Turn off the TV, do something like plan your next family vacation with a book or maps or there are these great things called conversation cards where they have questions like if you could live in any era in time when would you live and why and it gets the family engaged and talking together families that eat dinner together at least four times a week the kids have better more nutritious diets and better grades all so right. it's really important to do that. Great ideas. Maybe you've stopped the food fight <laughs> at least so. for now. Thank you so much, Cynthia. Thank and you. for more great ideas, check out Cynthia's website, www.cynthiasass.com. Thank you for watching Parents TV. We'll see you soon.